this about Soldier Boy. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta give him a little bit of latitude because he a victim, and he, his book been ran through quite a bit. They was playing tapes, and then the owner of the house pulled out Soldier Boy tapes. That's why he's always able to call other on being a swish. Birds of a feather flock. I mean, yo, did you gave me the Ushkash Kushmash? You gave me the Ushkash Muaf, the Shushmash. Yeah, son. Jaguar Wright and Orlando Brown are back in the press once again, and they lately uncovered the exceptionally substantial rundown of DL rappers in the company who've been being twisted around in return for valuable open doors. It's a well-known reality that component of these rappers enjoy guys and that they only utilize ladies as a cover to disguise the method that are being praised. Be that as it may, we didn't realize exactly the amount of them were truly doing it till Orlando Brown and Jaguar Wright got to leaking some tea. Jaguar and Orlando have been attempting to caution us very much this for quite a long, way before any of the facts about the business was ever uncovered. Yet, folks were excessively busy calling them mad to attempt and mind. In any event, with all that we know today, folks are returning to all that they've been expressing the past couple of years, and it looks as if they ain't really nuts, all things considered. Gay rapper. Yeah, man. And, and gay, not being just full out gay, but hiding and trying to pretend like he, you know, loves girls and live the rap lifestyle, but really, he's a man fan. In the closet it is real scary, you know what I'm saying? So we gotta get into, you know, get into the seriousness of it, and it's just not fair to, you know, other people, and then that spreads because that girl that you might be fooling might leave you and go find another dude who ain't gay. Presently, I'm certain the majority of you all have heard the stories about a portion of these rappers that be endeavoring to front leg straight men when they're really DL. Perhaps the earliest person to clock this tea was Wendy Williams when she blamed Diddy for being DL after photos of him getting his shirt pulled somewhere near one more man while he was holiday in Cancun was delivered. Diddy was not excited with her uncovering this, and he immediately had her terminated from Hot 97 and banished from truly getting utilized at some other radio broadcast in New York. Wendy Williams, she got fired from Hot 97 because she had a picture of Puffy. So if you don't mind, give me the story from your point of view and what was in the picture. We were in Cancun. For whatever reason, dude was playing with Puff. He went behind him and grabbed his trunks and pulled them down. Some girls that was taking pictures. They took the, that picture and emailed it back to Wendy Williams. <laughs> Wendy Williams said she had him in a compromising position and like he was gay p something like that. She was gonna put it out. Wendy had shown people that email. Puff told Hot 97 if they didn't get rid of her before he got back in New York, that they was not gonna get any music from any of his friends any of the record labels executives that was cool with them, everybody was gonna boycott, boycott their station. We was out in LA for about three days before we landed back in New York. Wendy Williams was in the radio station in Philly. He was fired. He's saying that they were in Cancun. For whatever reason, a man was playing with Puff. He went behind Puff, grabbed his trunks, and pulled them down. Some girls who were taking pictures captured the moment. They took that picture and emailed it back to Wendy. Wendy claimed she had him in a compromising position and implied that he was gay or something like that. Puff told Hot 97 that if they didn't get rid of her before he returned to New York, they wouldn't receive any music from him, his friends, or any record label executives who were on good terms with him. Everyone was going to boycott their station. They were out in LA for about three days before they landed back in New York. And Wendy Williams was at the radio station in Philly. He was fired. A very homosexual era of hip hop as well. Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams. And uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. And now it's all come full circle. There were many situations, none of which to talk about, but there were many situations um, back in the day in, in my career. And um, 
it's all coming full circle now, so. I don't completely accept that Wendy remembered it at that point. However, she opened the conduits for folks like Orlando and Jaguar Wright to emerge and get down on other DL rappers in the business. That will make you buckle, bro. They make you buckle, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, nah, cause man, people done lost their families, bro. People done lost their kids and sh People, people, uh, people, uh. However, it deteriorates on the grounds that throughout a comparable meeting, he furthermore placed Diddy on impact for connecting with him and attempting to turn him into his little twink while he was as yet a beginner in the business. Smash, smash. You gave me the ooh, smash, smash, the smooth smash, Diddy. Yeah, son. I mean, I mean, you gave me the ooh, smash, smash. I love it, y'all. I love it. You gave me the ooh, smash, smash. You know what I'm talking about, Diddy? Mm. Mm. Diddy. Mm. He subsequently showed up in another meeting when he name listed Usher, Drake, Bo, Wow, Busta Rhymes, and obviously Diddy as a section of individuals in the business that he laid down with. Smashed him when it was girl. I didn't smash anything. So how you know we that? We made love. We made love. That's Who you made love with? Diddy, Bow Wow, um, Buster Rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> you just told me you see Buster in, in the airport too. Never uh, from try to act like he didn't know you. You smashed Drake? Uh, no, I never smashed. Oh, you made love to Drake. And and um, uh, Cat Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you smashing a lot of people. Uh, what's that nickname? Uh, uh, Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard. Uh, oh. Terrence Howard. Um, Usher. Usher's a gusher. And, uh, what the? Why and, you not naming all? I'm telling you, bro. Uh, it's my dad's. My dad's friends. My dad sick his baddest friends on me. Who's your dad? Lucifer. <laughs> and while we're on the topic of Busta Rhymes, his former security just exposed him for paying big sums of money for there to be homosexual males in his VIP area. He further stated that Busta used to have an intimate connection with his lawyer, who also happens to be gay. The homies would always say, man, we gotta bring some more. We, we, we gotta bring some more, they call them. I'm not gonna say it. They call them uh, fun boys. They just say we gotta have some fun boys in the section for Buster. Cause you know I, I, I bodyguarded for Ghostface before. You feel me? I'm like damn. And my auntie like the biggest Buster Rhymes fan. You feel me? Like every cookout she planned it. All his little fast rapping, all of that. Him and Craig Mack playing that. Bro, on my soul, I'm out with a group of people. At this time, um, I was with uh, Don Benjamin. You familiar with him? No, I never heard of him. Model dude, like a model guy. He was doing like some rapper and stuff. His name Don Benjamin. So I'm out with Don Benjamin. And the club we ended up going to, Busta Rhymes in there. So he got, it was a this little lawyer guy that was with us. And the little lawyer guy we was with, you know, he was a gay dude, super cool, tell me, good guy. Bro, Busta Rhymes wanted him in his section so bad. Like, what? <laughs> Pulled him to the section, like through the rope, and tucked him off in the corner. So I'm looking like, well, he ain't come with us. Well, I know he was in the little group. So if I go out with somebody, like a group of people, I try to make sure everybody get there together and leave together. No, he stayed with them. He stayed in there with them, bro. For sure. Not long after this, an old video of a YouTuber rehashing the record about the day when Busta purportedly held his hand lovingly and encouraged him to go along with him in the celebrity, subsequent to seeing him outside the club, likewise began to become famous. As per the YouTuber, he felt Busta was simply being liberal. 
So he agreed to walk around the club with Busta. However, he really had different considerations. I'm walking across the street and Busta Rhymes just grabbed my hand. And he shaking, he holding my hand. Now, I didn't know it was Busta at first. You know, Busta Rhymes tall. I'm sure I came up to about right here. So the first thing I noticed was this big flip mode chain that was blinding me. So I look at the chain and I'm like, and I look up, I'm like, oh, what's up, Busta? What's up? Now he holding my hand the whole time. I'm like, what's up, man? Like, what you doing? And I was like, oh, me and my people, we about to go to this club around the corner. What's up, man? You know, and then I noticed throughout my peripheral vision, the side eye, this big bodyguard in black, just standing there, you know, looking around, you know, looked at me, you know, still looking around. Meanwhile, Buster still got my hand in his hand. And uh, he says, you know, I'm about to go in this club. You know, we got a section, you know, you can come in with me if you want. And I'm like, what, for real? Like, that's what's up. Like, he was like, yeah, I was like, well, I gotta, you know, tell my people. I was like, I, I, I come in, you know what I'm saying? He was like, okay, just let me know, you know, tell them that you coming in there to meet with me and come on up. And I was like, bet. Going on to Jaguar, she has also made a point of publicly criticizing DL artists in the industry and how they exploit up and coming rappers that merely require assistance to launch their careers. She did, after all, recently come clean about 50 Cent reportedly having an affair with Solya Boy when Solya was just starting out in the business. Back in since he was little, just like Weezy. Yeah. Wow. And he, he, he's been ran through quite a bit. And they caught him naked. Whoever his, whoever his big daddy was threw him ass naked into the hallway. He was walking around in the hallway holding him. Has actually appeared on a magazine couple together, um, cover together. Damn. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. That's why he's always able to call other n on being a swish. Birds of a feather flock. Be that as it may, it doesn't end there. She shared the report about how Diddy and Will Smith used to make Compliant Plant and Brashear Dark Frenzy out in light of the fact that it was in the relatively recent past. Jaguar asserts that under the misrepresentation of tutoring, Will brought Brashear into his gathering and at last constrained him into doing things he would even not liked to do. She even recalled the episode in which Brashear was heard running from Will Smith's home while shouting as loud as possible. Weird things in their house and young men have left their house screaming to get away from them in their mentorship. Meek Mills. <laughs> Bashir Gray. <laughs> left that house screaming. August the only one that stayed and I guess he was really sick, he needed that. Regarding Meek, he recently came under fire for being promiscuous after being named as one of the people Diddy slept with in one of his lawsuits. Just when he thought things couldn't get much worse, a recording of Diddy beating him also surfaced online. Additionally, Meek can be heard on the recording practically screaming for his life. It was unsettling, to put it mildly. Spike, son. Like, all the champagne was spiked. Everybody was passed the f out. I don't drink. I don't drink, so I was playing that shit off like I don't drink. I smoke, like I smoke, and I had my own. But like everybody was passed out. Yo, Diddy had that man in the room. Look, yes, I put my ear to the f door and I brought the phone because Diddy started going in overdrive. I ain't know what the f was going on, but I just heard balls slapping against cheeks. I heard struggling to take. I heard. Being like, yeah, daddy, like when, when I when when he started call, all that daddy this and daddy that, and then I heard some hollering and struggling. Like, yeah, I kept the phone there and I recorded all this because I was like, this Diddy. Everybody kind of knew back in the day that Meek Mills and Puff was a little too friendly. Anytime two rappers or two people in the industry come dressed up alike. On more than one occasion. And who can forget that video of Meek in the pool with his back arched as though he was attempting to ease some pain while Diddy taped and referred to him as his daddy. What's up, King Son? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. I'm proud of you. I love you. Yeah. Jaguar Wright then came forward to tell that the tape was actually captured and shared by Nicki Minaj 
despite the fact that it was literally claimed at the time that Diddy's former bodyguard was responsible. <laughs> well, he did talking he about fried. expensive pain. He did he fried. He no. did, did he do our Wait, box. this is Philly talking about me. now. Wait a minute, Jay. Real rap, me. You Wait. think that audio a, that they put out was real? Yeah, that was. He did he fried. This is Philly. He's a deep fried. <laughs> Nikki put that up to here. That that Nikki recorded that at the freak off in the Calabasas. Man. She been waiting to drop that shit on me. Oh. She just wasn't going to tell nobody it was Diddy. But now that Diddy out there, why not? So then who's the guy who's claiming he recorded it? Yeah. Oh, the somebody bouncer. that got paid? Yeah, he said, like, I was yeah, standing outside somebody the that door. got paid. Yeah. Nonetheless, before Jaguar referenced these rappers by name, Diddy was the person who reliably kept her talking. Jaguar chose to go out about Diddy's unlawful activities after he successfully quieted Wendy Williams about them, in any event, jeopardizing her own life. This. She referenced that she had strolled in on Christopher Williams, giving Diddy a BJ in his office, as per a legal counselor who used to work for Diddy. As per Jaguar, Diddy constrained Christopher into going down on him despite the fact that he realized Christopher was straight, all in return for a demo record bargain. Williams. I don't know, I guess he wanted to sign. I don't know what happened. But Puff was supposed to be giving him a demo deal and he gave him a demo deal and I guess it was supposed to turn into an album deal, which that never happened. Um, but this young woman walked in to get approval on some paperwork, see. And uh, when she walked in, the door wasn't locked. So she didn't think twice about just walking in. And when she walked in, she saw uh, Christopher Williams performing for on Puff. Now, from what she said to me, um, it was disturbing because, you know, they didn't stop. She just walked out and she just kept her head down at the office the rest of the day, I believe it was. And I don't think it was at the end of business day that day, but I think it was the following day. He came into her office and was like, yeah, so you came in there. So what? What you want to do? You want to say something? And she was like, oh, no, I, you know, I just, she was like, I just don't understand why you left the door unlocked. If you were in there doing that, why would you leave the door unlocked? He said, I'll do whatever the f I want to do in my building. And she was, I just don't know. He was like, it's power, see? I can make a man, he said, if I can make a man, my, I can make people do anything. Furthermore, since the game disclosed that he and Diddy were expected to be co-producing an album, there have been rumors that Diddy might be slapping the game's cheeks but Diddy flew him out to different parts of the world so they could party instead of in the studio. And you can probably guess where they were having this party. Of all places, Atlanta. Diddy lavished them with opulent gifts like blinged out chains and costly washes on their all expense paid shopping sprees. Start kicking it with Diddy, right? I ran around with Diddy for two years, uh, damn near. Um, and this Diddy, we never went to the studio one time, but he was like, yo, I f with, your, with your demo, that you know, bad boy, bad boy, bad. hey, Playboy, hey, hey, here go watch Playboy, here go chain Playboy. I'm like, yo, we ever going rap? He's like, nah, nah, yeah, I was doing for two hey, years. Hey, yo, with the jet, leave, the jet leave at five, we going to Miami, Playboy, we going to, you know what I'm saying, we going to New York, we, we in ATL this weekend, Playboy, pop out, pop out, and I was going everywhere with Diddy. Wasn't Puffy interested in, in working with you also? Yeah, Puff, I was running around with Puff uh, for a minute, but we was just, uh, we was just partying, man, Puff liked to party. Um, so that's basically all we did. I think I think the whole the few times I was running around with D Mac and Puff, uh, we just did a bunch of partying. We might have went to the studio once or twice, but I don't think I didn't get to record nothing. I was just, you know. Okay, but I mean Puffy was a huge deal back then. Still a huge. You know, I mean he's still a huge deal, but he's not doing music anymore. Right. Is what I'm saying. Back then, Bad Boy was on fire, mm -hmm. and he's running around with you. You know, Puffy's a busy guy. I was running around with him. Yeah. You were running around with him. Right. Was he talking about signing you or, or what exactly happened? Nah, P Puff was, he wanted to sign me. He just, you know, he was moving around. Like he had the uh, restaurant Justin's mm -hmm. in Atlanta. So we was in and out of that. Um, a lot of parties in Atlanta uh, with him and uh, V and, you know, Big Wolf and, you know, Fab and Jeezy was just, you know, I mean, Fab was already on. Jeezy was coming, uh, you know, coming up, coming to age. Mm -hmm. But uh, we just, we just party, man. No. 
Now that we all know what goes down at Diddy's parties, it goes without saying that Diddy won't take old man shopping unless he intends to run into him later. Do you guys recall when 50 made fun of Diddy for attempting to turn him into his boy toy when Diddy had offered to take him shopping? The puff was like, yeah, like first he was amping him to, to right. get stout. Then he was like, yo, he was like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we can just hang out. We gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is puff. Okay. He's telling me we gotta kick it. And he was like, right. yo, why don't we like go shopping or something? I mean, like I pay for it. And I was like, what the f this just say? <laughs> And then there's YK Osiris, whom Diddy is said to have flown to Jamaica with the intention of launching him into new professional ventures. When Diddy and YK were spotted vacationing together in Jamaica in 2021, suspicions about their relationship began to circulate. With praying hand emojis, YK shared a sensual picture of Diddy without a shirt in the pool on his Instagram stories. He also shared a picture of himself in the nude, enjoying a massage, eating delicious fruit, and listening to Diddy in the lovely weather. Many people thought these pictures were quite spicy and called him Diddy's twink. Yes, man, I sold my Lamborghini, I sold my Rolls Royce, I sold my Cadillacs. Yes, sir, Ski! I ain't gonna lie, this thing humble yourself. I ain't gonna cut tea. I got a floss for you, niggas, bro. Think I already got it. I ain't got a floss for you, niggas, man. If y'all gonna think what y'all wanna think. If I do got it, don't got it. Y'all y'all gonna think what y'all wanna think. I love this hunter. Shit, I ain't riding the fing Lamborghini. I got a floss for you. That's, a, that's what's wrong with you. Y'all feel like y'all got a floss for the Instagram, man. F them, man. Y'all don't floss for no dumb, no dumb Instagram. They gonna think what the fuck they wanna think. Sit back, I had to relax and look at the world like Osiris. You forgot who the fuck you are. You forgot where the fuck you came from. Fuck a Lambo, fuck a Rolls Royce. Remember where you came from. Don't get lost in the sauce. Get this music, drop this music, and get this. When YK's baby mama admitted on her Instagram stories that she ended their relationship after finding him in a relationship with a man, it just made matters worse for him. Stop asking me what happened to my baby daddy, she said. I saw him having an affair, all right? Now folks, don't misunderstand me. No one is criticizing Diddy or any of these rappers for their sexual orientation. People simply criticize and bring up these issues because they regularly abuse their authority by making young guys participate in these freak shows without their choice. It is one thing for someone to have a preference, but it is quite another to emasculate others and demand personal favors that you know they will never provide voluntarily by using your resources and influence. People have their own opinions about this, as usual. Nonetheless, I currently need to get your thoughts. What is your opinion about Jaguar Wright and Orlando uncovering each DL rapper? What's more, do you folks accept Diddy began the business's pattern of this large number of DL exercises? All of you realized what must be finished. If it's not too much trouble, share your viewpoints in the space accommodated remarks underneath.